Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I'm going to be taking out um, my lemoncello that I've been brewing for about the last six weeks. But before I get started, I want to tell you about this cool thing I heard on NPR today. It was about how this bar in England has created like a, uh, like a bubble over their bar um, to block out Wi-Fi signals because the owner was on NPR talking about how um, people would come into the bar, they'd come in with their friends, and um, the minute they had a second to themselves, they would whip out their phone um, and kind of shut themselves off and isolate themselves. And what the bar decided to do was kind of create this bubble so you couldn't play on your phone, so you'd kind of be forced to interact with people. Um, and they've only been at it for a week, but already they said it's like been like a huge success in their bar and that people are totally communicating and interacting with each other and it's like super awesome. So I just thought that was really cool. Like, don't you think in some respects that eventually that's where we're going to be heading is that like occasionally you're going to want time to like block out the internet, which is ironic that I'm saying that because here we are on YouTube, right? Anyway, so let's get started on this lemoncello and let me show you where I've been keeping it for the last month. Alright, so here we are down on the ground floor level of my kitchen and here's where my lemoncello has been brewing in this cabinet behind these bowls. This was acting as, these bowls were kind of acting as like a sound guard in case my son should get this, manage to get this cabinet open. You can see I have this like kid proof thing. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Ta-da! Okay, so now this recipe for lemoncello I got off Gizmo or Gizdo. I don't know, I'm going to link it below as well as like print out the copy and paste the recipe but the way that this one works is that you suspend a lemon above with cheesecloth which is how I got this cheesecloth that you keep seeing in all my videos um, and what happens is that the uh, this is vodka the vodka vapors essentially dissolve the zest of the lemon okay so the way the recipe started was that you took a 750 mls of vodka and then you suspended this lemon in cheesecloth over the jar. And that's been sitting for about six weeks. And as you can see on the lemon here, the, it's, re like the, the, it's wet, right? Because the vodka has like, a, the vodka vapors have essentially been pulling all the zest out. So if you didn't know what the zest of a lemon is, it's essentially the rind cut with this white part called the pith cut off. So in a lot of lemon cello recipes, what you'll see is they want you to take the lemon peel, remove the pith, which is the white part, and then soak the peel in the vodka for like a certain amount of time. Okay, so where I've gone wrong in the past, one of the steps that I've done wrong in the past is that when you try to remove the pith or the white part of the lemon shell of the the rind if you leave any of this pith inside it tastes like you can taste it it has a weird taste so in this recipe the next step is to take the pith of i mean the rind of either one to two lemons and this is a pretty big lemon so i'm just going to do one take some rind toss it in here with this then we'll add the sugar water so I'm going to show you with my really good knife, the one that I rarely use because the last time I used it I like cut a hole in my thumb and the scar is on one of these hands but it started to fade. So you're going to take it and you're just essentially going to remove this. But now the painstaking process is removing this white part which is just a pain in the you-know-what. So I'm going to cheat. Because we're going to only be tossing this peel at this point with the lemoncello for about 15 minutes, we're going to be letting this part soak. I'm not going to overdo it on trying to remove all the pith like I would if I was brewing the lemoncello 
with the peel inside. I hope this is making sense. Um, so I'm gonna get this prepped and then I'll meet up with you um, in a few minutes, okay? All right, so now we've got our peel in here from the lemon. I've created a, a simple syrup. They recommend a one-to-one -one ratio, but that's another problem, I, a mistake I did in the past, was that I allowed it, I, I made it too sweet. So now we're gonna let this mixture sit for 15 minutes. Then we're gonna strain, and then we're gonna drink it. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes. We've made it to the last step and now we have our tools to finish. We've got our rocks tumbler for sampling. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and strain the, the peel out. Pay attention, cause right about here, I spill vodka everywhere. And look, it doesn't even phase me. I just like, keep going. It's evidence that I am one, sleep deprived, and two, live with a toddler. Messes mean nothing to me. I'm like, what? Spilled vodka all over the floor? No big deal. Let's keep going. I'll clean that up later. Who cares? Okay, so if you were watching, I kind of spilled vodka all over the floor, and I gotta go get a towel to clean it up. I'm back. All right, now, the last segment of this is the true test, which is the taste test. And I'm not just gonna have me taste test it, we're gonna bring my husband in, who's been a, a pretty brutal critic of my lemoncello. I'm not gonna lie. Um, you know, he himself likes cocktails, and you know, there, there were many times when I offered him lemoncello, he would pass. All right, I'm thinking it tastes pretty good. I'm thinking it tastes the best of any of the ones I've made. Let's get them in here. As a disclaimer, I will be doing this taste test in a Scottish accent. You have to be honest. <laughs> I truly believe this limoncello could be the best I've ever tasted. <laughs> so it tastes a little stronger than some of the other ones I've made and a little less watered down. Perhaps that's what I like it so much. It's smooth, but lemony. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cheers. 